John Janning is considered Ohio's most prolific living inventor. While his most notable achievement is the liquid crystal alignment process that perfected the use of LCDs and calculators and watches, his thermal printing head wafer is used on the thermal paper each time you get a receipt from the gas station, a restaurant, or department store. And for all of you who have ever been frustrated when a light bulb from a Christmas tree light strand fell out or broke, you'll be happy to know that he invented the stay-lit Christmas tree lights that prevent those lights from going out. <laughs> the man has an incredible imagination, and as my father, he instilled his innovation strategies in me that I continue to use today as a scientist an engineer. I'd like to share with you, by means of a video introduction, some pictures of my father. There's a picture of him at the Walk of Fame on 3rd Street, pictures of my father's inventions, and a picture of my father's greatest discovery, my mother. <laughs> so let's get started on the Janning 7. The first innovation strategy is Ghana's don't count. I'm going to take that trip. I'm going to get started. In the one that never worked at home when I was a kid, I'm going to do the dishes. <laughs> when faced with adversity, challenges, or hard-to-solve problems, gunners just don't cut it. Too often, we wait for things to happen to us. Get out there and make things happen. Can you imagine if Nike added the word Ghana in their slogan? We'd all be walking around saying, yeah, I'm just going to do it. <laughs> Gunnas don't work. Innovation strategy number two. Ideas are like belly buttons. Everybody has one, but make yours count. How many times do you hear people say, I have this great idea? And I submit each and every one of you here today has an idea. An idea to improve a process, an idea perhaps at home, to change up your home a little bit, or an idea for an app that you can use on your, on your iPhone or your iPad. Ten years ago last month, I was diagnosed with breast cancer. After the diagnosis, my surgeon had an idea, a mastectomy. At 38 years old, I was not ready for such an aggressive treatment, nor, after investigation, did I need it. At 38 years old, I wasn't ready for that. So my father and I did some research on my treatment and came up with my idea. My idea, my body, my treatment. Here's a picture of my father and I. There we go. There's a picture of my father and I about halfway through my chemotherapy treatment. As you can see, we both have the same hairstyles. <laughs> That was his idea. <laughs> Innovation strategy number three, find solutions looking for problems. In 1960, the laser was discovered. At the time, it was a solution looking for a problem. A single beam of light of a single wavelength, but no use for the laser. It wasn't long before mankind discovered uses for the laser in science, research, and medicine. And today, there are solutions looking for problems occurring all the time, and in the most uncanny of ways. Three months ago, California experienced an earthquake at 3 a.m. The United States Geological Survey was on the spot, recording the seismic activity, collecting the data and metrics that they needed, but an interesting phenomenon occurred. Fitbits and personal trackers, like you see here, collected data in the middle of the night on the Californians that were experiencing the earthquake. Now imagine the type of data that these personal fitness trackers collect. Heart rate, stress, anxiety, sleeping patterns. Never before had such intimate details been collected during a natural disaster. Today, scientists and researchers can use the data collected during that earthquake 
from the Fitbits to come up with solutions to help perhaps anxiety and stress and in large natural disasters, personal sleeping habits, because a lot of people couldn't get back to sleep after the earthquake. So it's interesting, there are solutions out there that have more than one opportunity to drive change, and this is just an example. So remember, find solutions looking for problems. Strategy number four, tinker. Out of all the innovation strategies that my father taught me, this one was my favorite. Because in the household that I grew up in, if you tinkered, you were never wrong. And in fact, there's a picture of my father tinkering at his workbench that was in our basement. And I did everything I could to stay up at night to watch my father tinker, because I hated to go to bed. But at about 10 years old, I took apart an alarm clock. And when I put that alarm clock back together again, the second hand moved in the reverse direction. <laughs> While at first I thought I had just discovered how to turn back time, <laughs> the second lesson I learned is I could create something through experimentation. I could tinker and create something completely different. Too often, we throw things away. We live in such a disposable society anymore. Next time you go to throw something in the trash, take it apart. Take it apart, you might learn something. Find out how it works. Recycle, repurpose, and reuse. Be creative. You never know what's out there that you could design. Janning strategy number five, dream big and ignore put-downs. Said more simply, dream big and avoid that negative energy. Dream big, work hard, take calculated risks, and did I mention dream big? Develop a vivid imagination, because you know what? You're gonna get there. Nobody caught that? Gunners don't count. <laughs> you will get there. Dream big. At 23 years young, Michelangelo set out to create what he considered a, the most impressive piece of art, the Pietà. When Michelangelo finished the Pietà, he put it out on display, and there were naysayers and doubters that did not believe this was Michelangelo's work. They credited this beautiful piece of artwork to another sculptor. Michelangelo was furious. He was frustrated. And so he took his chisel back out, and you can't see it on this picture right here, but he took his chisel back out, and on the Virgin Mary's sash, he signed the work of art. And the way he signed it, in a rough English translation, is Michelangelo from Florence made this. Now, it's a good thing Michelangelo didn't let the naysayers and the doubters keep him from dreaming. He kept moving forward and created the Sistine Chapel, the frescoes on the ceiling of the Sistine Chapel. Keep in mind another piece of, of information that you may not know. This is the Pietà is the only piece of artwork that Michelangelo ever signed. And he did it because of the doubters and the naysayers. So remember, dream big, develop a vivid imagination. And one thing to keep in mind, all things are possible, but not all are practical. And wisdom lies in knowing that difference. Dream big. Innovation strategy number six, act differently. Switch it up a bit. This is one of my favorites, too. I challenge each and one, each one of you here today, the next time you go to a restaurant, have the wait staff pick your meal. You may get some funny looks, but you might learn something. You might learn that the liver and onions that you've always avoided, you really like. I did this two days ago. I went to a restaurant and I ordered a salad. And when the waitress asked me what kind of dressing I would like, I said, I don't know, you pick. She said, what? I said, you pick. She was, you could see the stress in her face. <laughs> and a few minutes later, my salad came out with two different dressings. <laughs> she was afraid that I wouldn't like it. And I told her, I said, but what if I do like it? The key here is to avoid the habits that prevent us from learning. 
One of the things that I like to do in my job is I, I like to experience different jobs, different, do different career moves, because the things that I learn in one job are tools that I can apply in another. And by acting and thinking differently out in my workplace, not only do I keep my teammates on their toes because they never know what I'm going to do next, but it allows me to use those tools in a different way. Give it a try. You'll, you'll be surprised at how successful you can be by thinking and acting differently. Innovation strategy number seven, determination. Also known as stick to itivity, perseverance, persistence, resolve, and the way my father used to put it when I was a kid, stubbornness. So many people say the words, well, I can't do that. And they spell can't, W-O-N-T. They don't try. It's so important, determination, to try and try again. You know, confident persistence is the key. Scientific research, in its pure nature, is learning through experimentation and persisting in the face of ambiguity and failure. Confident persistence in that determination is key. In Dayton, Ohio, this is the bedrock of determination and confident persistence. Wright State University, the researchers we have at the University of Dayton, Wright-Patterson Air Force Base, the Air Force Research Laboratory, it all happens here in Dayton. The bedrock and the cornerstone of confident persistence and determination. You can do it. So the next time you watch your LCD television, or you get your receipt from the gas station, or you put up that Christmas tree and all the lights stay lit, I want you to think of John Janning. John Janning gave me this as a gift, and I pass that gift to you today. And to our great fortune, Mr. Janning has joined us today. I'd like to introduce my father, John Janning.